Hello and uh, thanks for coming along to my channel. This is the second part of the uh, transistor ionophone, which you can see here. So now it's finished. It was a lot of work. I have to uh, do the uh, late work uh, for the aluminium horn you can see here and do also some mechanics, which is not my favorite. <laughs> uh, my favorite is more the electronic part, but no electronic also with mechanical parts. So I think it's uh, the world first solid state ionophone and uh, it's working perfect. It's, uh, the sound is more clearer than uh, the old one I built with uh, the uh, plastic horn it's under here grab it so this was the old one there is uh, this uh, wave guide which you can mount on the top and uh, yeah now I've made this this aluminium horn and uh, it's uh, very clear in sound and uh, I'm very pleased with the result. So how to build this you can see in the episode and uh, have fun! Now the mechanical fun begins. <laughs> I have uh, made me a sketch, a template. I don't know if template is the right word in English. and. Uh, this is what I have to do now on the lathe. So we have to turn this in that. <laughs> yeah. Here you can see one piece is ready. Um, it's a lot of work. I'm not. Uh, a mechanical specialist on the lathe, but uh, <laughs> I do my best. Yeah, and uh, on the back there came this steatit ceramics. Yeah, yeah. There we go. So the second one is waiting for me. <laughs> I do this off camera. Because I'm, I'm not a specialist, there are many people out there, they are better than me. Now here we are. This is the front plate. So here we have the front plate and uh, the aluminium horn <coughs> and uh, on the back side there is uh, the ceramics and the plasma cell. So therefore this uh, ceramic resistor was bought and uh, with these springs we can uh, pull it back and put easily the quartz cell and here the, uh, the electrode out. So uh, this is the electrode and uh, here we have uh, the quartz cell. And uh, this is uh, this metal ring here is uh, the counter electrode. It's connected to ground in this case, so we can put it in, put the electrode in, push back our ceramic holder and put the uh, counter electrode in place. The counter electrode must be in the middle of our quartz cell 
and uh, this is uh, the best uh, position. So if we uh, put it further back, we have the risk that there is here a spark between the inner electrode and the middle electrode and we put it in the middle then uh, the distance is okay and also this counter electrode has influence on the flame size if we put it uh, more in the front we uh, get uh, um, a big circular flame and we put it in more in the back the flame is not so strong but the disadvantage is if you put it more in the front it does not starts easily so uh, the best compromise between starting and flame size is really when the counter electrode is in the middle of the quartz cell so that's it for now and uh, we can mount this now on our on our case mounted in the case it looks like this so this is our front with the horn and uh, here we have our quartz cell and beneath we have our loading coil it's down there and um, I built a shielding case around um, this unit and it will be also closed uh, with this cover with uh, four screws and uh, the reason for this is um, that the RF energy which is traveling here is so strong that the RF energy has confused uh, my audio amplifier which will become on this side so it was necessary to shield the whole unit so and uh, this is mount so far here is uh, the RF PCB down there is the wire who goes to the loading coil this is a ground connection direct to the cage and uh, here we see uh, the power supply lines there is uh, a big choke for the power supply and uh, on this side i will mount uh, the audio amplifier and that's all So for power unit I use uh, these uh, switching power supplies for, for laptops. It's uh, 24 volt 6 amp switching power supply with a normal connection. And uh, the tweeter draws about 3 amps of current with uh, the power amplifier. But uh, if you use switching uh, voltage power supplies, you need always uh, the double amount of amps for safety. Because if these switching power supplies get warm to about 50 or 60 degrees Celsius, they lose from their efficiency. So. Uh, the, uh, the capable amount of current you can draw out of these reduces to uh, 80, 70, 60 percent. So this is the reason why I always took uh, uh, the double power which I need if I use switching power supplies. So this is switching power supplies, uh, 24 volt and uh, 6 amps. So that's fair enough. So it will be uh, connected in like this and uh, that it was. So the power amplifier is not built in, therefore these uh, 
those wires are here but uh, the RF part is in and it's connected and uh, if we shut down our light I think you are able to see uh, the, uh, the purple claw if I switch the tweeter on so there you can see it here in and since this is a transistor device you can power it on and off as you like it will start immediately and uh, when the power amplifier is uh, built in we will hear the sound also so we can turn this around and, uh, so i think you can see uh, the glow yeah that's so far now here we have the uh, printed circuit board for the audio amplifier so and uh, the populated one already mounted on the heatsink we see here and uh, here is the amplifier I see and this around and this is the volume knob which will be outside of the speaker is the kinch input kinch input is here loudspeaker input is here these are the power resistors for the normal speaker input it will be have an impedance of 8 ohms and uh, this is the output to the error part so let's mount it the audio amplifier will mount it here on the left side or right side belongs where you're looking from this is the wiring ground wiring and uh, RF and plus wiring and uh, <clears throat> also there is uh, a backplate and the backplate goes on this and um, I do this off camera and uh, we'll be back later this is the mount to tweeter so far here you can see we have here on, on the left side the audio amplifier board we have here on the right side the RF amplifier board and uh, the plasma cell with uh, the loading coils in the cage and um, on the back side whoops it's heavy <laughs> On the back side here, you see uh, this is a uh, volume knob, uh, speaker input and kinch input for uh, active crossovers, power switch, fuse and main voltage in. So as I mentioned before, I'm using here this uh, normal laptop power supply and this is 24 volts connected in here then I can put in my function generator here and uh, if we now power it on click put the volume on and I have uh, plugged in uh, a wobbling signal from 1 kilohertz to 10 kilohertz and it's functioning perfect so volume control here on the back and uh, there in the middle hope you can see it is uh, the plasma flame so tweeter is now ready for testing hey how you doing all right, all right. where you coming from I'm gonna have to the disco man, a little bit of clubbing, you know? And? No luck. No luck. No luck at all, man. No luck. All right. So where are we going to change your luck? 